to my vomit. So in this end time, we have to be aware of signs of the end times that the enemy is throwing out. As God wants many people to make heaven, Satan also wants many people to make hell. As God wants many disciples of his, believers, to make heaven, the devil also, the same thing he did in the Garden of Eden, that he made the first Adam and his wife fall. He also want to do the same thing, that we will not inherit that eternal life that Christ by his blood has done for us. No wonder the Bible says, wash and then pray. You cannot keep praying without washing. What are you washing? Washing your life? Washing the signs? Ensuring you are well positioned. Matthew chapter 24 verse 3. And I read, And as they sat upon the mountain, as they sat upon the mountain, as they sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciple came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall this thing be? What things? And what shall be the signs of thy coming and the end of the world? Those are the two questions they asked. When shall this thing be? And they broke it down. They said, number one, when shall it be that you are coming back? You are here now. You are going to leave. You've told us you have to go to beg the Father to send the Holy Ghost. So when we leave you that you will return back to us. And again, second question, what will be the end of the signs of the end of the world? So let's look at two things tonight. The signs of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and the end of the world. Then Jesus began to answer. Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. He started with a caution. Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. You shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Say that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Then he proceeded. He said, For nations shall rise against all the nations, even kingdoms against kingdoms, and there shall be famine and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrow. They shall then, let me repeat verse 9, then shall they deliver you all to be afflicted. Take note of that word in verse 9. Is that many is a part of the world, but it's still going to go more rampant. Then shall they deliver you to be afflicted and shall kill you. I pause on that. And shall kill you. And, sh and ye shall be handed of hatred of all nations for my name's sake. Underline that mentally in your mind. You shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. They don't hate you because of you. They don't hate you because of your color. It's not because you are white. It's not because you are black. It's not because you are rich. It's not because you are poor. They will hate you because of the name you identify with, that name called Christ. And then shall many be offended. Take note of that word. The spirit of offense will come out amongst and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. That is even in the Christian dawn. The first hatred is outside the church. The second hatred is within the church. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. I stop in 14. And the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations and then shall the end come. There's a reason why I pause at 14. But if you really want to understand the total sign of the end of the world, read it to the end of chapter 24. There are still more signs, including the Antichrist coming before the rapture. But I am not going there tonight because of time. Let me quickly say this. Take note, the signs of the end of times and the second coming of the Lord Jesus. Christ started with a warning. They asked a question. Tell us what will be the sign, but he gave a warning. Why warning? Because in desperation of flowing or following or looking for a sign, people can find themselves in error. Easily, people have been deceived. 
So Christ, before he starts prophesying the sign of his coming and the end of time, he plays a warning so that people can learn to wait, so that people are not looking for the wrong things. Many are going to different churches today looking for signs and wonders when the Bible says it will follow you. So what's God saying here? Christ is telling the disciples and same time telling us, don't be in a desperation. It is not about the sign. I am giving you signs, but that is not what you really need to focus yourself on. If you focus on my signs that I am giving to you, you will get to a point whereby you will be deceived. You end up with the same because uh, you, are, you are too worried, too worried, uh, or because uh, you are frightened, uh, or because uh, you, you, you get to a state where you can't handle it anymore. Anything, the devil will use a deception tactics to bring you to a point where you will be the same. So don't focus on the signs. The signs are there to, you see when you are driving from a point to another point, there are signs on every good road that you know the government has placed in there to navigate you to the direction you are heading. You do not focus too much on the sign. When you as a driver begin to look for sign, it means you lost your way. When you see a driver say, oh, let, where is the sign, where is the sign? It's a sign that that person is disturbed, perplexed, lost their way, they are confused. So God is saying in confusion, you focus too much on signs, the enemy will deceive you. Go with me. It's a warning, verse 4. And what is that warning in verse 4? I want to read it out again. Verse 4, to all believers, Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. No matter what is happening, no matter what is going to happen, we are hearing of Russia and Ukraine. The world is gathering together for whatever they want to react. They are not God. If God didn't authorize anything, third world war may not happen. Hear me very well. What God is telling us, no matter what is the sign that you are reading in your country and in the nation of the world, take heed. Don't be the sea. I hear this. As much as Christ spoke about the sign, Christ wants us to focus on the enemy. The enemy is not what you see in the outside. It is about Satan, the deceiver. In the process of focusing on the realities on ground, if we are not careful, we will lose the target. The target is the deceiver. The Bible called him the father of all lies. He never said the truth. And from the beginning, he has always lied. So we need to always wash out, not for the sign, but for the deceiver that I want to deceive. So it brings me to another understanding. For me not to be deceived means that I must take heed. What does take heed mean? It's an old English, but let me try and break it into our new common day usage. Take heed means be observant. Who are those that will be observant? Observation comes by diligence. It means it is in the category of somebody that wants to study. What students always do is to be observant. When they are in class, I remember when I was in class in those days, first degree law, masters, you know, I remember my teachers, lecturers would be telling us, take note of this area. Take note of this area. I find out that whatever the lecturer, particularly in university, kept hammering, or they keep repeating, those are areas you need to study and be acquainted with because very highly likely questions will come out for you. So an observer is a student, and the one that I'm saying, study to show what yourself approved. So if I am a student of the Bible, under the teacher called the Holy Spirit, then the spirit of lies cannot deceive me. The spirit of lies cannot deceive me. That deceiver cannot take me away. I read verse 4 again. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. It means that there will be a lot of theories, a lot of explanations, a lot of prophetic words, a lot of men and women that will rise up and say, God has spoken to me, my dream is coming tomorrow. God has said this to me about this, about that. 
And Jesus is telling us here, it doesn't matter what anybody says, don't be the same. Now, what are the signs of the end of time? Sign number one, many will come in the name of Christ and their agenda is to deceive many. Read with me verse 5. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. Who is Christ? The Savior. Be very careful so that you are not deceived. Let me take you to a new revelation. They may not necessarily come and say they are Christ because that name is deep. It's a name that has been blessed, sanctified, set aside for only one person called Jesus. So they won't come literally and tell you I am Christ. But they, when they begin to act as if they must be worshipped, they begin to act as if they are the savior of the world. They begin to act as if everybody must bow at their feet. When they begin to arrogate what belongs to God to themselves, they are literally telling you they are Christ. Yet there are some that will say they are Jesus. But majority of false prophets really did not come out blank and say, I am Jesus. But in their behavior, in their attitude, in their teaching, in their word, in their character, in their becoming and acting as if there is no God but them. They are about to tell you or telling you in no significant time that you know what? They are Christ. I read that again. Many shall come in my name. And they will say, I am Christ. And the motive is to deceive many. They will make people to worship them. What is Christ for? Christ has been exalted. The Bible said God has given him a name that is above every other name that at the mention of the name Jesus Christ, every name must bow. So this individual who never said, I am Bishop Philip Christ, but they want you to worship them. They want you to bow to them. They begin to teach you human doctrines, doctrines of man rather than the doctrine of God. I was reading the place in the book of Mark today. And Jesus began to question, you know, the people in that community. He said, uh, you, have, you have taught people, you've replaced the doctrine of man with the doctrine, the doctrine of God with the doctrine of man. He said, by so you weaken the doctrine of God. And that is the, where deception comes in. Deception is little lies, mingle with the truth, to weaken the truth. The Bible says, that was the first sign that Christ is very close to coming and we are in the end time. When you begin to see deceivers in ministry, when you begin to see deceivers on the altar, another name I call a deceiver is a, a line of double standard, an actor, an actor, an actress. One line on the pulpit, another line outside the pulpit. It could be a choir member. It could be anybody. Not reflecting submission to the Lord Jesus Christ. And they are playing double standard. Is an act of deception. For many shall come. You see, Jesus said, many shall come. And he went for that. In my name. They will come in my name. When they come to you, they say, oh, bless you. God bless you. Do you know Jesus? Yes. We love Jesus too. And before you know it, gradually begin to become, uh, they want to become Christ in your life. So it's a spirit of domineering. They want to dominate you. They took you from the one that saved you and now put people in bondages. Go and bring holy water. Go and buy handkerchief. Come and buy oil. They replace the Bible with everything that does not make us, make them different to another list. But they always come in the name of God. Or they will prioritize deliverance. Whenever you have any single trial, trial that God allow you to go to for your promotion, out of ignorance or sheer wickedness, to deceive the gullible, they will tell them, you know what, you need deliverance. Before you know, you may hear it 24 7. It is your family that is doing it. Oh, he said, I've heard many things that, oh, there's a blood covenant in your father's house. Just to arrogate, when somebody wants to be in the center of your Christian journey, then there is a problem, a deceiving spirit. Hear me? True messages signpost you to Christ. Paul said something. He said that I may decrease and that he may increase. That I may decrease and that he may decrease. But first gospel, make man the center of everything. It's about our daddy. It's about our mommy. 
And if that is not mentioned, ego will trip. No, it's about God. It's about the Lord Jesus Christ. And the symbol he stands for, which is the truth of the gospel. The Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Sign number one. Many cunning. Many cunning. And the Bible says, many shall come in my name. Number two. You will hear of wars and rumors of war. We are living in the part of you know, the world where information is not really filtering through. And uh, when they bring information to you, they censor it. So it doesn't allow us to know where the truth lies and the gravity of the kind of conflicts that are happening all around the world. But sincerely, trust me, the world is not at peace. There are children waking up on that bomb shell every day. Wrongly, rightly, it's not the issue. But things are happening around the world. And Jesus is telling us, he said, verse 6, and you shall hear of wars. We've had many wars before we were born. I've heard of First World War, Second World War. But God is telling us there are more than we can. And right now there's a lot of wars everywhere. People are fighting because of land. People are fighting because of freedom. People are fighting because they want to they want to break away. They don't want to stay in another country. People just want to fight for one thing or the other. People believe the only way to get things done is by fight. People believe that peace can sort anything out. And then they go to tension. To the end of it all, let's share blood. The devil is behind it all, not God, because he's the author of confusion. We're being warned here. You will be hearing of war. Not only wars. You also hear of rumors of wars. That you know what? There's going to be third world war. There's going to be fourth world war. There's going to be fifth world war. The question is, who are the planners of these rumors of war? Wars doesn't just happen. Some people prepare for it. Some countries prepare for it. Some nation wanted it. There are some nations that can't do without war. Because that's how they make their money. Jesus said you will hear more of that in this end time. Wars? and rumors of war, but he now gave us a sign of comfort. He gave us something that will calm your nerves. Hear what he said. He said, see that you be not troubled. After all, that is what the world is all about. War is to bring trouble. When there is a war, people are worried. People are troubled. People are concerned. But Jesus said, don't do what the enemy wants you to do. Don't let the effect of the wars and the rumors of wars that will happen around you bring your mind to a state of trouble. Because when the mind is troubled, it means the mind is operating in fear. And I'm saying you have not received the spirit of fear. If God has not given you the spirit of fear, but the spirit of boldness sound mind and of peace, then you need to allow your mind not to be troubled. But you know what? It's not what anybody can mechanically do. You cannot mechanically stop your mind from being troubled. It is only the Holy Spirit that can enable you, encourage you. It is only the Holy Spirit that will not allow your mind to be troubled. It means that if you don't want rumors of wars and wars to have its negative effect on your mind, on your health, on your life, then you and I must hold on to the Holy Spirit what the Bible calls what? The Comforter. The Comforter will comfort you. When I was hearing about this country, want to bomb that country, this country want to bomb that country, I really feel for people living under those dreads, and we that are far away from it, we are not safe from it either. But there is a comfort in my spirit of the Holy Spirit saying, I will not leave you, nor forsake you. When the enemy came like a storm, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a stone that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. When we begin to allow our mind to be troubled and fear bring us, we stand the risk of lack of progression. It will disturb our spiritual health. We will not be able to even communicate effectively with God. No matter the circumstances, no matter the war or the rumor of war, Christ is advising us, is a sign of the end time, we should not be troubled, and he puts something else there. He said, for all these things must. So your prayer cannot stop wars and rumors of war. I know there are many sides that, that believe that when we gather together and we pray, war will stop. Read your Bible. There are certain events that God has already prophesied before he lectured that your prayer cannot change. Let me read that again. 
and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, seeing that you are not troubled. There are some prayer we pray out of fear, and God does not respond to prayer of fear. He said, don't be troubled. Why? All these things must. You can't stop it. God didn't bring it. Mankind has invited Satan into our world. And the only thing Satan has to give is what he's giving. And the Bible says all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. The end is not yet. The end is not yet. Number three. Rising of nations against nations. Another sign of the end time is that nations shall rise against nations. Struggles for independence. There shall be struggles for independence. Look around you. Over 20 years or more ago, what am I saying? About 25 years ago, or 25, 30, one of the things God talked to me prophetically was. One of the things you begin to see closer to my coming back is many countries you see as one entity will be broken into different units because people will be clamoring for their country. Different people say, I want my country. We, we, and it's happening everywhere now. You haven't seen anything yet. You are going to see more. It will be so heavy. I read it to you here. For nations shall rise against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms. You will hear some countries say, we are not one nation. We could be one country, but we are not one nation. We need our own country too. And the Western world where we are here is already happening. Scotland said they want to be independent. Go to Africa, it's never independent. Go to Spain, some countries they want to be independent. It's in the Bible. For nations shall rise against nations and kingdom against kingdom. There are many fights for different reasons. And Christ has already told us, you see, whatever you know of before time and beforehand, you should not panic. Anytime you see it happening, check the Bible. Is it lining up with what Christ prophesied? Yes, it does. What was the advice of Christ before he left? Do not be troubled. Then tell the Holy Spirit. In reality, it is very troubling. But if Christ said, I should not be troubled, help me not to be troubled. Once you are troubled, you will be deceived. Once you are troubled, you will be deceived. Everyone that has went through that level of being troubled are always a victim of deceit. The Bible says that there shall be famines, there shall be pestilences, there shall be earthquakes in diverse places. Take note of those words. There shall be famine, shortage of food, shortage of food. Anyone that really going to the market and buy food these days knows there is no more room for wastage because there is shortage of food. You will have think is in one place, thought is in one place, but it's in many nations of the world. Many nations of the world. Things are not the way it used to be. I was being told eggs that used to be very cheap, you don't want to know the price of egg now. Things are expensive. There shall be famine. Bible said it. Famine is coming. Is a sign of the end of time. There will be pestilences. So many times we are waiting for man of God to do prophecy, women of God to do prophecy. The Bible is your prophetic book. Read it. It's spoken explicitly. Pestilence will come. COVID that we've just experienced in the nation of the world, whether man made, whether satanic made, whether natural, it is a form of pestilence. The Bible says it 2,000 years ago that it will happen. The Bible says there will be earthquakes. There have been several earthquakes in many nations. And there are more that will still happen. You hear me? There are places that have never been subjected to earthquake before. The earthquake will begin to happen with a natural one of the one that was orchestrated by superpowers. But the Bible said to us, there will be earthquakes in diverse places. The motive of all these things is that Satan wants you to be troubled. The key here is do not be troubled. No matter what is happening around town, do not be troubled. Another sign of the end time, note, note, let me go and say this, note, note the end, but the beginning, note that this is not the end. Let me read that verse 8 for you. All these are the beginning of sorrow. So I put here, this is not the end. 
The war you are saying, and you know, I've been hearing, oh, with the, what is happening now in Russia? What is happening now between Israel and Iraq? Oh, the end of the world has come. Any slighted war, this is a third world war. And they say, we can't survive it. But God said, I should tell you, we will survive any war. We will survive any rumors of war. We will survive any pestilence. We will survive any famine. Jesus said, don't be troubled. But he gave a caution. He said, what the same will not survive? He said, it is the beginning of sorrow. We have been in the dispensation of beginning of sorrow for too long. And God said, there will be more sorrow. So every time people enter the new year, I am shocked when ministers of God come forward and begin to give prophetic word. It shall be prosperous for you this year. You are going to buy 50 houses this year. And judge their prophecy. At the end of the year, it's worse for the people than the way they started. No one of people are getting the solution of so-called ministers with prophecy with no basis and bearing on reality. The Bible says it's the beginning of sorrow. Heaven want to prepare you for what is coming. Don't let anybody deceive you or weaken your faith. The key here is no matter how sorrowful the time will be, God is asking you to focus inside. It is the beginning of sorrow, and there's going to be many more sorrow. But the Bible says, The joy of the Lord is my strength. It means I will spend time in the Holy Spirit to allow the Holy Spirit to have a deeper watch in me to produce His joy that will be able to tarry me through this sorrow moment. Happiness cannot make it for too many people anymore. You need the joy of the Lord. The Bible spoke about another thing that I want you to look, look at verse 9. The Bible said, Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. They will deliver you up to be afflicted. And I put it down here as persecution of the church. Jesus' followers shall be delivered for affliction. Some people say it's already happening. Yes, I know. It has been happening for several years, but it will intense more. Do you know the reason why it appears as if Christians are still in the forefront of being loved by everybody? It's because we have not stand to be counted. It's because we have not truly identified with Christ. What happened to Christ will happen to true believers, the remnant. The moment you start living a life that is different to the world, they will hate you. Because the spirit inside of them is a spirit of darkness and they cannot love your light. The moment you set yourself apart unto holiness, the Bible says, Be ye holy as your Father in heaven is holy. The world that choose not to walk in holiness will hate you. We cannot be accepted. If you have been accepted right now, get ready for the timings that are coming when you will not be able to stand and talk that I belong to Jesus. Many will leave. They are not hating you because of your color. They are not hating you because of your color. They are not hating you because you are poor. They are not hating you because you are rich. They are not hating you because of your pedigree. They are not hating you because of where you were born. They are not hating you because of your personal belief. They hate you because of the association of the name of Christ you have. They hate you because you are connected to righteousness. They hate you because you are calling them into judgment. They hate you because they love, love lawlessness. And every time you come out and your life portrays Christ, your word portrays Christ, your action portrays Christ, you are a threat to their life. You are a threat to their kind of person. You are a threat to their choosing way. The enemy inside them will fight you. The Bible says that there shall be, and there many, let me read again, verse 9, then shall they deliver. They shall deliver you up to be afflicted. You now see why the Bible says, out of afflictions, I do what? I call my own. Get ready for affliction. You see, when I was in the military, there was a set of trainings they gave to us as the military guys that was a shocker to us coming from a civilian background. But they kept telling us, we need to make you hard. We need to prepare you so that you are not broken when the reality struck. And if you are not prepared when reality of war can, you can't stand it. You will go back. So Christ is saying, men and women of God, prepare the church for this next phase before the rapture. What we are going to face is not baby stuff anymore. We are going to be afflicted. 
the majority who choose to say Christ is not for them and they don't want Christ and they are living in lives. The master that control them will make them to afflict you that said Christ is my way. The three Hebrews were afflicted in the Old Testament. Why do you think you will escape it? The disciples were all afflicted in the New Testament. Why do you think you will escape it? And that's why the Bible says, Jesus said, whoever want to be my disciple must first of all count the cross, carry your cross, and then follow me. There are cross to be carried. There are counting to be counted. You need to ask yourself, am I ready for this? A time is coming, prophetically I'm speaking now, that we will move away gradually, move away from this open church, beautiful cathedral, if truly you are preaching Christ. The time is coming that many of us will have to run underground to still continue to teach disciples about how to stand for Christ in tough time. The time will come that preaching on television may become something impossible if truly you stand for the truth. I read that verse again. Then shall they deliver you to be afflicted and shall kill you. Gradually, I'm bringing my mind to that understanding that everyone will die one day. You see, if you love this world too much, you wouldn't want to live here. Even though there is nothing valuable, you can lay your hand on. The Bible says, Jesus said, whoever loves their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life because of me will gain it. Christ spoke before he left and is the master of all truth. I would have expected Christ to be very, very you know, to speak in parable and this kind of thing. You know, he was not speaking in parable. He spoke straight. He, he, he opened up. Look, and you want to know the future? Let me tell you the future. You want to know what will happen before I come? This is what will happen. So begin to count. Are you going to go through it? And I thank God because the rest of the disciples went through it, not by their power, but by relying on the Holy Spirit. The life of Peter, who denied Christ and Three times, you know, to his face, now become the same Peter that they want to nail to the cross, going through his own affliction to the point of death. He said, No, I cannot share the kind of death that my master had. Can you do my own differently? Turn me upside down. Which one is tougher? Which one is tougher? Of course, the one, none of them is good, but turning upside down, scientifically, I'm not a doctor, but that is more tougher, I believe. What about John? John was taken, put him inside hot oil. They lifted the oil up, the guy was smiling at them. They tried every means to kill him. He was unkillable for them. That's a different kind of English, isn't it? They don't took him to Ireland or Patmore. And that's where Revelations was given to him. What about James? James was put in a log of wood and they saw him into two. How callous human being can be? Oh, you say we are more civilized than those days. Let me warn you. There is nothing called civilization when it comes to matter of spirituality. Devils either control people or God control people. They put James in a log of wood and they saw him and both the wood and blood were flowing down. There was none of the disciples of Christ that died naturally. All of them, excluding John, were killed. And Jesus said it here. He said that, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. If the Bible calls us soldiers of Christ, soldiers are never scared of paying the ultimate price for their nation. And the Bible says that our kingdom is of heavenly. Stand and be counted. This is not a message for every church goer. This is not a message for Christians either. This is a message for believers. This is a message for those that were born again. This is a message for those that have hope of eternity. This is a message for anyone that is walking with the Holy Spirit. Somebody that is going on to sonship. If this is the price we have to pay to get into eternity, the temporary pain cannot be compared to the eternity with God forever where we will share the story. The Bible says that, and you shall be hated. It didn't say you will be disliked. It didn't say they won't like you. It didn't say they would not want to talk to you. It didn't say they wouldn't want to come near you. Say you will be disliked. You, you will be hated. That's a strong wall. You see, when somebody say I hate you, run for your life. Because when hatred enters, murder is coming. 
The Bible says, you will be hated of all nations. All nations. When you go to Europe, the same thing. When you go to America, the same thing. Even the country that call themselves a Christian nation, they will also hate you. And you say, why do you hate me? They say, because of that name you are associated with. Read with me, verse 9. They take of all nation for my name's sake. So they gave an option. If you don't want us to hate you anymore, just leave that name. Don't preach that name. Don't say the truth of that name. Don't tell us about Jesus. Don't tell us about his death. Don't tell us about his coming. Can you just water down the message of the gospel? Can you try to not speak the whole truth? Jesus said, I am the way. Don't teach us about the way. I am the truth. Don't bring the truth to us. We don't need your kind of eternal life. They will hate you. Hear me? It could be all nations in the pulpit. It could be all nations in the altar. It could be all nations in the pew. I have seen some men of God that when they ask them some questions regarding homosexuality, I say, what's your stand about this? He said, it's evolving and still evolving. I said, shame on you. Shame on you. If your view is evolving, then you step out of the foundation. Because the Bible never evolves. The Bible is never an evolving book. It is people that change. It is time that change. It is the system that change. Christ, God, and his word never stay. He said, forever, old Lord, your word is set to the devil. Whatever is set to cannot change. The Bible says God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So when I see a man of God or a woman of God that's evolving in principle, evolving in teaching, evolving in their revelation, and it's not on the word of God, they are fake. They have been deceived. The Bible says many shall be deceived. It is not good enough that I was standing on the truth 10 years ago, and now I'm falling away. I must continue to stand. The Bible says you will be hated. People do not want to be hated. I, I don't like I don't like accusing men and women of God, but when I hear things, it, it worries me. There's another one that says something. They ask him, they say, what about so so person of the Church of Mama, who is a senator in your state, in your country? They say he's a senator and he belongs to the Church of Mama. And this man pulled a huge crowd. And he said, open it on the TV. He said, well, as far as I'm concerned, so far he claimed he loved God, so far he claimed he loved God, and all the things he said, he said, it doesn't matter, it's all that believes. I believe it. I can work with him. I believe it. You know, he's going to make heaven. I said, what? He won't make heaven if he doesn't change. There is only one way to heaven. Religion is not that one way. There are many religions. They cannot all be a way to heaven. Christianity is a religion. It is not a way to heaven. Let me repeat. Christianity as it stands today, the kind of general Christianity we know is a religion. It's not a way to this same God we're talking about. Just like going to, you know, Islam is a religion. It's not a way to God. The Bible makes it very clear what is the way to God. Jesus is the only way that God himself created for anyone to come to him. He said, except you accepted the Son of God, you will likewise perish. And accepting him is a starting point. I must then enroll in the school of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit only teaches those people that are saved. Because he has no time to waste. He has no resources to waste. Holy Spirit is not there to make you comfortable. He's there to carry you from a child of God out of sonship. Because eternity is his mission. The Bible says, we'll be hated of all nations for my name's sake. So every time you go for evangelism, and people that are not up to even talk to you, begin to talk to you anyhow, know that it's not you they hated. You speak to some people that normally you talk to them on other things, they will respond to you. Once you mention the name of Christ, no, 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 I'm not interested. They treat you like a leper. You better enjoy it more and worse is coming. And continue joy. Because you have been persecuted for the sake of Christ. Persecution is coming. And I'm going to stop at a point. But by the grace of God, I want to continue next week. Um, verse 10. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. The Bible says that the spirit of offense shall take over. The spirit of offense shall what? Shall take over. There will be offense everywhere. Look around you. 
in the church, in homes, in families? What is breaking good relationship? Offense. You see husband and wife that used to love themselves. Once the spirit of offense came in, offense is like a magnet. It sticks to you. And it keeps reminding you of why that person must not be let go. Why you must not talk to that person. Why you must not come close to them. Why you must run away from them. All of a sudden, a friend in the past become an enemy suddenly. Why? The spirit of offense. Offense is so bad that even the disciples, the Bible says, they all run away from Christ. They left him alone because they took an offense in him. The Bible says in this end time, I read that place again, another sign, and then shall many, not few, so there's a demon called offense, operating in the lives of people. people. Some are even offended against God. They can't stand God. Oh, the reason why I'm going through what I'm going through is because of God. But they thank God two years ago, when God promoted them. After they have gone through the previous trial, and God now said, okay, you are entitled to what I want to give to you. Now, five years later, God said, I want to promote you to a higher ground. But because of ignorance, lack of teaching, because they fail to realize that God does not give anything good, just freely, you must sit your examination. And when they are going through their examination, they begin to misbehave, offense setting. Oh, God doesn't love me. God hated me. Here he is. I've been there too. Until God begins to give me the revelation. And now that I know the revelation of how heaven proceeds in lifting his own up, it demands that I must be patient. The Bible says, let patience fully have his work in you so that you will be perfect. And when you are patient, don't be offended. Don't be offended against God. I pray, 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 pray. And still, God has not made it happen. I have done everything possible and still God is looking at me. People that are not coming to church are getting it. Me, I am not getting it. Mm -hmm. Don't be offended. That's why God gave me a message in the end of this year. He said, there are two ways, and I finish with that, to go through this year. Either you go through the root of confusion, which I believe include the root of offense, or you go through the root of thanksgiving and worship. And no matter what comes your way, Turn it to Thanksgiving. And you know what? There are many times, many times, I have to remind myself that theory. There are many times I have to Holy Spirit help me because I'm human. And there are times I find myself still doing the other thing. Right? Thank God that looking back compared to who I used to be, who used to be very highly offended against God. Now suddenly I thank Him even when things are not working. The Lord will bless us, signs of the end time. I will want to take part two next week and I pray that the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this night. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your power. We pray, oh God, that you continue to take us to the next level. That even with the signs of the end time, we will not be troubled. We will not be deceived. Or rather, we will wait on you. We will be teachable by the Holy Spirit. We will be knowledgeable from your hand and your mouth. And we'll continue to focus on eternity. And thank you, Father, for all you've done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.